You probably already know that this is an umlaut. But did you know that this is also an umlaut, but this is not? Well, hold on to your hats because we're talking phonetics. We need to clarify exactly what we mean by umlaut. Strictly speaking, an umlaut is a type of vowel, or even more strictly speaking, a vowel that has been altered in a particular way. That is, it is a sound or a sound change. And in German, this sound change is represented by the familiar two dots, which we often call an umlaut, but that's just for convenience. But in some other languages, such as French, the two dots are there to show that two vowels are pronounced separately. So this word is si trop un. This isn't an umlaut, but a diuresis. And in this case, the two dots are sometimes called a trema. The umlaut is a feature of Germanic languages in general. There are in fact three types of umlaut, but we're going to be concentrating on the sounds represented in German by these letters. And this is the I umlaut, or the Germanic I mutation. We actually have this umlaut in English, it's just written differently. And then everything got scrambled by the great vowel shift, which was a huge change in the way that vowels were pronounced and took about 300 years to complete, and is the main reason that English spelling is such a mess. But before we can go any further, I need to introduce you to the IPA vowel chart. This is a chart that we can use to describe how different vowel sounds are pronounced. So the best way of explaining it is like this, if you'll excuse me. So the chart looks like this. It is a very rough cross section of the mouth with the lips always to the left. We can plot vowel sounds on the chart according to two things how far you lower your jaw, and most importantly for the umlaut, how far forwards you push your tongue. For example, the sound ah is pronounced with the jaw lowered and the tongue pulled back. And this is where it goes on the vowel chart. It's an open mid back vowel. There are a few things that we can't easily show on this chart. For example, it makes a difference as to whether a vowel is pronounced with lips that are rounded or not rounded. So for example, or is pronounced with rounded lips and is an open mid back rounded vowel. There is also an open mid back unrounded vowel and it sounds like this. Uh. Fortunately, we have something called the International Phonetic Alphabet, which has a unique symbol for each sound. So, for example, here is rubos in that alphabet using the British pronunciation, but if you are an American, this is probably more what it would look like. So we can clearly see the difference between uh and aw. And if we go back to the vowel chart, we can write in the symbol for the exact sound that we want, which in this case is the rounded vowel. And we can do this with any vowel we want. So here are all the vowels in the standard German dialect. Now this isn't exact because human speech is in reality very complicated, but it's good enough. These vowel sounds are simple enough. They're called monophthongs and are pure vowel sounds. These are diphthongs, vowel sounds that change as you say them. I, ow, oi. So that's the general principle. Let's take a look now at the vowels that can be affected by the umlaut. In writing, that's these. Three single letters representing monophthongs and one diphthong. And this is where those sounds go on the chart. But hang on, didn't I say something about three monophthongs? And yet we can very clearly see at least five. Well, that's the difference between letters and sounds. Each of these letters represents two different sounds. So we have a and a, o and o, and u and u. So that actually makes six monophthongs plus the diphthong ow. Now here's what the umlauts sound like. E and e, u and u, U and U, 
and oi. Now remember, these are approximate. Not everybody is going to have exactly the same pronunciation. We can plot these on the chart, and you might have noticed something. They are all front vowels, except for the diphthong, which starts as a back vowel, but moves forwards. Without the umlaut, these are all back or central vowels. And that's basically what the I umlaut is. In German, the two dots over a letter mean this sound, Make it a front vowel. Push your tongue forwards. Not too far forwards, obviously. It still has to stay inside the mouth. But this raises an interesting question. How did this umlaut come about? And why is it called an eye mutation? For the answer to this, we have to go back in time to a language so old, we don't even know what it was called, and we have never seen it written down. But it was the ancestor of all the Germanic languages, German, English, Dutch, and the Scandinavian languages. Linguists have been able to reconstruct parts of it, and they call it Proto-Germanic. The Proto-Germanic word man meant person. Only much, much later did it come to mean male human. And the asterisk here is a reminder to linguists. This is a reconstructed language. We cannot be 100% certain that it's accurate. It's our best guess. The plural was manis, and there you see the I. And if you look back onto the chart, that letter represents a front vowel. So this vowel started to affect the pronunciation of the other vowel, a back vowel, that became more and more like a front vowel. But then the plural ending is started to disappear, but the other vowel that had now changed didn't change back. The ghost of that missing I continues to haunt the word and change its pronunciation. And that's why in modern English the plural is men, and in modern German it's Männer. And that is the origin of the I umlaut. Now, of course, a lot has happened since then, and things are a lot more complicated now. Not every time when you see an umlaut does it go back to a missing I. But that is how it all began. Uh, there actually is a little bit more to say about the umlaut, but I said a lot of it many years ago in a video that you should see linked in the blank space below me, or look for the link in the description.